So here we have two men with two different ideas on how men are saved. One is right and the other is partially right. And out of these two men, I stand with Paul Washer. Now, the late Billy Graham held to a view of decisionism, in which is the idea that a person is saved by coming forward, raising their hand, saying a prayer at the altar. It's essentially an altar call. Now, this isn't to say that men and women can't and haven't been saved this way throughout history. But as a rule, this is not how it happens. And the majority of churches that practice this are just flat out false churches that desire experiences over true conversions. Now, Paul Washer, on the other hand, holds to the doctrine of regeneration. And I'll let the man himself explain what he means. You know, I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat right now, quickly, hundreds of you, and come and stand here on the grass right in front of the platform. And as you come, you're saying in your heart, I really want my sins forgiven. I want to know I'm going to heaven. I want my name on the book of life, and I want to know it. I want to be sure of it, and I want to settle it. If you're with friends or relatives, they'll wait on you. If you've come with some, you can bring them with you. But you come. Don't let anything keep you from Christ on this beautiful Sunday afternoon, Saturday afternoon. You can come and stand on this carpet of grass. And by coming, you're saying, yes, when you say, Billy, why do I have to come publicly? Because every person Jesus called in the New Testament, he called publicly. Every person he called publicly. Why? Jesus hung on the cross publicly for you. Now he asks you to come. He said, if you're not willing to confess me before men, I'll not confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. So you draw the net and you get people to come forward. Now look at how they do this. The music plays a, it, it must play a role because I noticed that they always make sure they got the right music. So that, that must play a role. Some even dim the lights. Lighting's important. Okay, and then also, if you've got a big enough congregation, you don't put your counselors down front. You put them in distinct places all around the auditorium so that when you give the invitation, they come forward, which makes it easier for the other people to come forward. Tell me that doesn't happen. It does everywhere. That's a cult. That's manipulation. And I'm going to call it exactly what it is. It's wrong, it's sin, it's deceptive. And it has nothing to do with the ministry of Jesus Christ or the apostles. Now if a man is up there preaching and he wants people to come forward. He's, he's preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's crying out for men to repent and believe, to take their stand no matter the cost. He's telling them that Jesus Christ promises them two things, eternal life and a cross to die on. And people come forward and they're broken and he counsels them for four hours. i got no problem with that. But that's not what's going on. They come forward and then someone who has been supposedly trained in counseling. Now notice Trained in counseling, but not trained in the gospel. Comes down with a clipboard, talks to that person five minutes. Gets that person to pray a prayer. And then, the preacher comes by, reads the prayer. Oh, come on up here. Brothers and sisters, I want to present to you your new brother and sister in Christ. so wrong. There's a reason why God gives elders or pastors to a church. They are men who supposedly qualify for the ministry. I'm not going to have just someone who's trained in how to get someone to pray a prayer. If someone is seeking the Lord, shouldn't an elder be there? Shouldn't someone trained in theology and the discernment of souls of the working of the gospel in the heart of a man be able to sit there and maybe sit there four hours and maybe have to meet with them for the next six weeks before anything like, we'd like to present to you someone who has made a profession of faith. Isn't it wonderful when you go to a church and someone says, a few weeks ago, so-and-so came, 
We shared the gospel with him. We spent time with him in prayer, discipleship, gone through many things like the book of 1 John, that this person might have biblical repentance. We considered their conversion experience and everything else. They have the assurance. And we as pastors ourselves have scrutinized this situation. We've prayed over it. And with great assurance and great joy, we present to you this brother to be baptized. If you're going to start a church, do that. People are not in numbers. They got different color skin, different color hair, different color eyes, and they all bleed and die when they get cut. They all have a soul that will pass eternity in heaven or hell. Stop treating them as numbers. I want to tell you something. When Jesus Christ comes back, it's not the liberal politicians that better be trembling. It's the pastors. Because so many men have built their ministries on the dry, dead bones of unconverted church members. We need to stop it. This is about people. This is about people. 